Hello and welcome back to our YouTube channel Aviation Avi. Go where you feel the most alive. A last video on precision approach path indicator part 1 was all about its use, its specification, its structure. Two will be taking care of the D1 distance as I've already discussed in part 1. So it is also called as the setting, the position or the D1 distance of the puppy from the threshold. From this picture, I would like to give you a glimpse of what part 1 is. If you haven't watched our video on part 1, please go through it. It will give you a better understanding of this video. So if an aircraft is approaching a runway and the pilot of the aircraft sees that all the puppy units are glowing here, white, which means the aircraft is too high on approach. In the next picture, if an aircraft is approaching and the pilot could see only one red and rest white and the red one is just edged into the runway, which means slightly high. If a pilot could see two red and two white, that means the aircraft is on correct approach path. Coming to the last picture, if a pilot finds that, oh, all the units are red, meaning the aircraft is too low and may hit the ground before the threshold. Now coming to this picture, the D1 distance. It is distance of the position of the puppy from the threshold. So now let's get started with the video. Before knowing anything about the distance, we should know the three basic concepts or three basic terms. We should know the meaning of these terms so that it becomes easier for us in the further video to understand the logic of the D1 distance. The approach configuration MEST or the minimum I height above threshold and the value of the angle M. So by getting these three points clear in your mind, I'll be able to help you out with the calculation of D1 distance. The approach configuration when it is said that an aircraft is on approach path, the pilot's eye can be anywhere within the approach corridor as depicted in the picture. So in this picture, you can see Papi units here and there are two rays originating from the Papi. The first ray is originating and going straight toward the pilot's eye or it is also written as pilot's eye path. The second one, which is slightly higher to it, goes like this. And this two line suspends an arc, which is called as approach corridor. Now we can see a third line starting slightly ahead of the threshold and going towards the wheel of the aircraft. It is the wheel path. And this is the lower limit of the approach corridor. So what we can infer from this? We can infer that if the pilot is following this path or the lower limit of the approach corridor and the wheel is following this path, it can be seen that the wheel could hit somewhere here, somewhere ahead of the threshold when the aircraft is landing at a runway. So this configuration is known as approach configuration calculation of minimum eye height above threshold. It is the same picture. The only difference is we have MEST here. Now MEST is just above the threshold as the name indicates minimum eye height above threshold. So it's the eye of the pilot following this lower limit and at this point it is just above the threshold. So it is minimum eye height above the threshold. We have further divided into it two parts eye to wheel height and wheel to threshold height. Now, when this aircraft slowly slowly comes comes near to the runway, its eye to wheel height will be this, meaning if it is maintaining this configuration approach configuration, 
it will have a eye to wheel height of this much and wheel to threshold height of this much note ewh and wth meaning eye to wheel height and wheel to threshold height are for the aircraft in the approach configuration and are not dimensions as may be measured for a parked aircraft resting on grounds meaning when both this wheel of the aircraft and this wheel of the aircraft is on the ground touching the ground then you cannot substitute ewh and wth as both are on the same line this is only formed when the aircraft is in approach configuration calculating the angle m in this picture we can see six angles angle a angle m angle b angle c angle d and one in between b and c so how these angles are formed will be taken care in the next video in this video let's assume that we have b as 2 degree and 45 minutes minus 2 minutes comes to be 2 degree and 43 minutes which is the value of m so if you minus 2 minutes from the value of b you will get m and m we have taken as a lower limit of the approach corridor now we have this table 5 dash 2 from nx 14 so it has three columns first column says i to wheel height of aeroplane in the approach configuration meaning this one this part the second column says desired wheel clearance and the third column says says minimum wheel clearance so both of these two columns corresponds to the wheel to threshold height we could we can take either of the two depending upon the circumstances at our airport so part a in selecting the i to wheel height group only aeroplanes meant to use the system on a regular basis shall be considered the most demanding amongst such aeroplanes shall be determined to i to wheel height group part b where practicable the desired wheel clearances shown in the column 2 shall be provided and part c the wheel clearances in column 2 may be reduced to no less than those in column 3 where an aeronautical study indicates that such reduced wheel clearances are acceptable part d when a reduced wheel clearance is provided at a displaced threshold it shall be ensured that the corresponding desired wheel clearance specified in column 2 will be available when an aeroplane at the top end of the i to wheel height group chosen overflies the extremity of the runway part e this wheel clearance may be reduced to 1.5 meter on runways used mainly by light weight non turbojet aeroplanes so these are the criteria by for selecting the ewh and wth forming the meht so in the next slide we will be taking this part from the column 1 and their corresponding value from column 2 and 3 for our calculation so now we will calculate meht first so given the criteria as per table 5-2 of nx14 if an aerodrome not equipped with ils the most demanding aeroplane that uses the papi visual display system falls under the i to wheel height group of 8 meter up to but not including 14 meters so here we have taken this value so meht shall be ewh is 14 wth is 6 from the table so meht comes out to be 20 note ewh or i to wheel height is always provided by the aircraft manufacturer for references of ewh some of the aircraft are also given in appendix 6 of doc 9157 which is aerodrome design manual part 4 now calculating function of d1 now since we have calculated the value of m so it comes up to be 2 degree 43 minutes converted into degree only it is 2.72 degrees meht is 20 meters now 
coming to this diagram mehd is this part this height which is 20 meters and angle m is this which is 2 degree and 43 minutes so we all know that tan theta for this angle or tan angle m is equal to perpendicular upon base or d1 or we can also say tan theta angle m is equal to mehd upon d1 so we have mehd we have this angle we can calculate d1 from here so this is what is done here so d1 comes out to be 4 to 1 meters approximately since we have converted this degree and minutes into only degrees that's why we have used approximately here the value is somewhere around 421 meters so this was the calculation of d1 when the elevation of our threshold and the unit of papi especially the unit b of papi is at same elevation or at same level but when talking in practical terms it is always not possible as we have found out that the difference is of 421 meters between of threshold and the papi and in practical scenario it is very difficult to maintain same distance so some corrections to d1 papi units should be at minimum practicable height above the ground and not normally above 0.9 meters note where there is a difference in axis of 0.3 meter and above between the elevation of the run with threshold and the elevation of the b unit of papi it will be necessary to displace the papi from its nominal position this distance will be increased if the proposed site is lower than the threshold and will be decreased if it is higher i am reading this again this distance will be increased if the proposed site is lower than the threshold and will be decreased if it is higher so it is saying that the elevation of this unit and the elevation of threshold is not at the same height and differ by 0.3 or more so we have to apply this correction so how to apply the correction let's see assuming threshold elevation is about 310 meters elevation of the site of the papi is proposed to be installed is about 309.5 meters difference comes out to be 0.5 meters now the difference is more than 0.3 meters we have to apply the correction so effective mehd with reference to papi shall be now 20 plus the difference we have to add the difference in the mehd height to get the correct position or the correct t1 so now applying the same formula tan 2.72 degrees is equal to perpendicular or mehd divided by base or d1 so d1 comes out to be 431.57 meters which means papi will be sighted at 431.57 meters to achieve mehd as 20 meaning to get the eye of the pilot at the same desired height we have to increase the distance of the papi from threshold in the previous slides we got it around 421 meters but now it has increased so we have to increase this to get the eye of the pilot at the correct point in the similar manner explained above adjustments to d1 have to be made if the lenses of papi at the site where papi is proposed to be located is above the threshold elevation by 0.3 meter or above note no correction would be required if the level at the proposed d1 and the height of the lenses of papi at d1 combined differ by less than 0.3 meter from the threshold so this was all hope you have the knowledge of how to calculate d1 and how to correct it according to the situation and the elevation of the papi unit especially b and the threshold so do like share and subscribe our work because your support is our motivation